Hi, second graders. Today I get to read Dance in a Buffalo Skull by Zitkala Saw, illustrated by S.D. Nelson. Look, it says a prairie tale. Ooh. I'm gonna read lots of this introduction to you because we're learning about Dakota people. Zitkala Saw was born in 17, mm, 1876 on the Yankton, whoops, here we go, the Yankton Sioux Indian Reservation in South Dakota. Now, uh, Robin taught us a little bit about Indian reservations when she came to talk to us and tell stories. We'll talk about reservations, not today, but later. As a little girl, she listened to the elders of her tribe tell stories around the campfire. One of her favorite stories was about a wildcat, some mice, and an old buffalo skull. She loved the story and wrote it down in English for others to enjoy as she did. Dance in a Buffalo Skull is an old, old tale. Zitkala Sa tried to write it down as she had heard it around the campfire. The animals and the places are the same. The mice live on a grassy prairie in an area known as the Great Plains. They start in the west side of our state of Minnesota. The same scary eyes flash and the wolves howl, just as Zitkala saw rem remembered them. Animals were always important in American Indian stories. The elders used them to teach lessons to children who lived on the open prairie. In this story, the mice are enjoying the dance, but they're enjoying it too much. No one's keeping watch. Children who live in a wild country must always be alert for danger. They must have an escape plan. The Great Plains of the United States have changed since the elders first told this tale. They have changed even more since Zitkala Sa wrote the story down over 100 years ago. Wolves no longer howl in the dark of night and wildcats rarely slink along the riverbeds. Most of the buffalo have gone now too. It's hard to find a dried buffalo skull now. The country is not so wild, but some things do not change. Mice still need to be wary of cats and dogs. And the Nakota, oh, the Nakota told each other this story over and over. This way of teaching and sharing information is called oral history. The lessons always come through to the listeners. Those lessons are still important today. We all need to pay attention to the world around us and not get too caught up in what we're doing. It's kind of like your parents would say, look both ways before you cross the street, right? Look at this illustration. It was a night upon the prairie. Overhead, the stars were twinkling bright, their red and yellow lights. The moon was young, a silvery thread among the stars. That sure reminds me of Ramadan, the beginning of Ramadan. It soon drifted low beneath the horizon. Upon the ground, the land was pitchy black. There are night people on the plain who love the dark. Amid the black level land, they meet to frolic under the stars. Then, when their sharp ears hear any strange footfalls, nigh they scamper away into the deep shadows of night. Mm, I said that wrong. I'm trying that one again. When their sharp ears hear any strange footfalls nigh, they scamper away into the deep shadows of night. They are safely hid from all dangers. They think. Mm. Thus, it was that one very black night, afar from the edge of the level land out of the wooded river bottom, glided forth two balls of fire. They came farther and farther into the level land 
They grew larger and brighter. The dark hid the body of the creature with those fiery eyes. They came on and on just over the tops of the prairie grass. It might have been a wildcat prowling low on soft, stealthy feet. Slowly but surely, the terrible eyes drew nearer and nearer to the heart of the level land. There, in a huge old buffalo skull, was a happy feast and dance. Tiny little field mice were singing and dancing in a circle to the boom, boom of a wee, wee drum. They were laughing and talking among themselves while their chosen singers sang loud a merry tune. They built a small open fire within the center of their dance house. The light streamed out of the buffalo skull through all the curious sockets and holes. Eye sockets. A light on the plane in the middle of the night was so was an unusual thing, but so merry were the mice they did not hear the kins, kins of sleepy birds disturbed by the unaccustomed fire. A pack of wolves fearing to come nigh this night fire stood together a little distance away and turning their pointed noses to the stars howled and yelped most dismally. Even the cry of the wolves was unheeded by the mice within the lighted buffalo skull. They were feasting and dancing. They were singing and laughing, those funny little furry fellows, all the while across the dark from out the low river bottom came that pair of fiery eyes. Now, closer and more swift, now fiercer and glaring, the eyes move toward the buffalo skull. All unconscious of those fearful eyes, the happy mice nibbled at dried roots and venison. The singers had started another song. The drummers beat the time, turning their heads from side to side in rhythm. In a ring around the fire, hopped the mice, each bouncing hard on his two hind feet. Some carried their tails over their arms while others tra trailed them proudly along. Ah, very near are those round yellow eyes. Very low to the ground they seem to creep creep toward the buffalo skull. All of a the sudden they slide into the hole sockets of the old skull. <laughs> Spirit of the buffalo, squeaked a frightened mouse as he jumped out from a hole in the back part of the skull. A cat, a cat, cried another of mice as they scrambled out of the holes, both large and snug. <gasps> Noiseless, they ran away into the dark. The end. Mm. Spooky. Do you think the cat got any of those mice? I hope you enjoyed Dance in a Buffalo Skull. <laughs>